Hey y'all, so I'm just going to share this in my group really quick and then we're gonna get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm Toyin from the Academic Society and I help grad students with time management, organization, and also applying for jobs. Um, and so uh, last week, uh, in my department, we had a grad school panel where we were just talking about organization and workflow um, in grad school. So there were some questions that we were prepared to answer and also some questions that came up from the grad students. So I'm just going to share the things we talked about because I thought some of the things are really, really helpful. And especially for people who are just starting graduate school, it's helpful to kind of understand what you may need to do. Um, to uh, be successful in grad school. So if you're watching this now, definitely pop on and tell me hi. And if you're watching the replay, let me know um, that you're watching a replay. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will reply to them. Okay, so the session was called Organization and Workflow in Grad School. So I'm just gonna go through the questions and give you some of the answers that were given during the panel. Okay, so the first question is, what is your biggest challenge to balancing te teaching, research, service, and home life? So basically work-life balance. All right, so one of the things that everyone agreed on was that you can do all of these things well. Like you can do your teaching well, you can do your research, um, you can do service and actually have a good home life while you're in grad school but you can't necessarily do them all well at the exact same time, all right? So you have to choose, what do you wanna be good at this week? Do you wanna be good with your research this week or do you want to be good with your teaching? Do you wanna have um, a good like home life or a good routine at home, a nice schedule, or do you want to get a lot of research done? So you kind of have to figure out balance from day to day, not overall balance on each day. So you can do all of these things well, but just not at the exact same time. All right, so another thing, so one of the answers I provided was uh, when I was in grad school, I didn't really know who I was and how I worked at the very beginning. Um, I've learned since then that I'm a morning person. I need to get my work done in the morning. I'm just the most productive at that time. And so when I was in grad school and I had to teach, many of my classes were scheduled in the morning. So like my classes that I had to teach were scheduled in the morning. So by the time the afternoon came and it was time for me to do my research, I just wasn't motivated to do my research. It was very hard for me to get started. It was very hard for me to continue working after like 45 minutes. So I realized I had to, meet, I had to actually get my research done in the morning and then teach later in the afternoon because teaching is something that's always going to get done. You're going to end up being prepared for your class, but it's just so easy to put off research over and over again. So the next question is, uh, what do you know now about organization and balance that you wish you knew when you first started grad school? So this is definitely good advice for first year grad students or people just starting uh, grad school. Um, so definitely, again, knowing myself and knowing when I was most productive do doing specific tasks. So am I good doing my research in the morning or am I better in the evening? Maybe I should schedule checking my emails for later in the afternoon um, so that it doesn't throw me off my productivity schedule. Also, creating a morning routine, especially for times like now. So it's summer, so you may not have classes to go to. Or during the semester when you don't have morning classes, it's hard to kind of get up and start your day when you should. So I think developing a morning routine that you do every single morning can help you get up and out of the door. So I recently had to do this for myself. It's summer. I have stuff that I need to do, but I don't have any strict deadlines. I just found myself wasting my morning every single morning. And the later I would get out of bed, the longer it would take me to get ready for the day. So I started setting my alarm, waking up, and actually going through a morning routine, which includes like writing in my gratitude journal, doing a workout, um, making breakfast, things like that. So coming up with a routine, especially when you don't have classes in the morning. 
Um, also, ded dedicating time for myself is so helpful. It helped me to not experience burnout so often. So when you, when you just work, work, work all the time, working and being in grad school, it's so easy to just get so tired. And then you kind of start procrastinating. And then you just get so overwhelmed that you don't really do anything. That's what we really want to avoid. Um, so yeah, um, dedicating time for yourself to reduce burnout. And the most important thing that we all agreed on on the panel was sleep is so important. It's so easy to be like, oh, I have so much work to do. I just need, I just need to stay up all night or stay, stay up really late, work in my office really late and get everything done. But actually, when you get enough sleep, the quality of your work and the amount of work that you can do just increases so much more dramatically. Like you can get so much more work done when you're, <clears throat> excuse me, when you're well rest, well rested. And also, um, you can, your quality of work, like the work you do, is just so much better when you had a good night's sleep. All right. So my next question. Are there ways grad students can work together to help each other balance their schedules? So I thought this was an interesting question. Can grad students work together to make better schedules for each other? And I think kind of maybe would be the answer. <laughs> so one example, me and my friends, uh, so people who were in the same grad program with me, we were always together. We would teach the same classes. And when we would teach the same classes, we would schedule our exams for the same day. So we can have grading parties together. So that's like dedicated three hours that we would get our grading done on the same night. And so that's done. And so we have the weekend for ourselves. Also, we would uh, make a schedule and plan time to go to the gym together. So that's kind of more of a life thing. But planning and doing things with your friends work works. Also, if you're teaching. Something that can be helpful um, that I did in my grad program was create a shared folder for me and the other grad students. So everyone had their own folder with their name on it within that shared folder. And so for courses that we were teaching, we would just upload um, all of our course materials, handouts, activities, so that other people can use them and we can just share. And I found that to be very, very helpful. Also, um, I found out at my school now, some of the grad students host their own seminars. I wanna say it's called Street, or so basically, um, it's a course that helps fill in the gaps. So like you learn all of the stuff in your classes and then you start working with your advisor and they're like, you should know this thing that you never learned about. So the grad students here actually came up with their own seminar where they presented and like discussed the things that their, their advisors thought they should know. So they call it. I think it's called street, but basically it's the math you learn on the streets. And I thought that was really funny. Okay, so next question. What apps or technology do you use to help keep organized? So many people say Google Calendar works very well for them. I recently, or last semester, I started using Trello, um, which is a project management slash organizational tool. And I actually developed some workflows on there uh, for graduate students that I found to be helpful. Um, so if you're interested in that, you can go to my website and I have like, it's called the Grad School Toolkit and it helps you walk through Trello and you can like copy and paste all of my boards or you can just ask me and I'll send you the link. I've also been using Asana lately, which is another online project management tool scheduler. And so I, what I like about these online things is they sync with your phone so that uh, if you're like out and on the go and you have an idea or you remember something you have to do, you can just add it to your phone and it'll sync with your computer. Um, uh, someone mentioned bringing loose leaf paper to class instead of bringing notebooks, one because they're lighter, but also the person would go to class, write on their loose leaf and instantly scan their notes. So they had a digital copy of all of their notes saved on their computer. They don't have like stacks of paper or stacks of heavy notebooks and just recycle the paper after. Also, I think Dropbox or Box or OneDrive, any like cloud storage where you can like share files. Um, is really helpful. So working on something at school and also being able to work on it at home and updating that file is really helpful if you have cloud storage. All right, another question. How do you have productive meetings with your advisor? 
Right. So the main consensus was you have to ask your advisor questions. Don't be afraid. Yeah, they're the expert now, but they're training you to be the expert. So you have to ask your advisor's questions. And so a thing that I would like to do when I would meet with my advisor is actually create an agenda for each one of our meetings. So literally on a piece of paper, I would bring the agenda to my meeting with my advisor. And so on there, it would be everything we discussed in our last meeting the things that I worked on, the questions that I had and where I got stuck. And then finally, what do I need to do for the next meeting? And you just have like a little flow. You don't get off task and you know exactly what's expected of you after the meeting is over. So I found that to be very helpful. All right. And so the last question is, how do you stay on task and not lose time? All right. So my number one tip is to-do list. Just the act of writing out the things that you have to do kind of keeps them top of mind for you. And if you want to take it a step further, I like to, once I have a to-do list, reorder it in order of importance and also put the amount of time that I want to spend on those tasks. And it helps you stay on track and things that take longer, you kind of are have in mind that, oh, I actually need this time for something else. Also, I, something that I haven't tried in grad school, but I have with like my blog and my business is I have an accountability partner and we meet every week and talk about what we're going to do, how we want to move forward and succeed. And I think that actually could be very helpful in grad school, like find someone who, you know, wants to exceed as much as you and become accountability partners. Maybe you'll have lunch once a week or just meet for like 30 minutes and talk about, okay, what do we need to get done this week? Do I want to write this much on my dissertation? I want to read or write um, for this assignment that I have due. I want to prep this many notes for my class, things like that. And so have someone that you're held accountable to. It also gives you like deadlines. So each week you have you have a deadline to get all of your stuff done. And so I think that could possibly be very helpful in grad school as well. All right, so those are all of the questions and all of the things that we talked about on the panel. If you have any other questions for me, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will answer them. Everybody have a wonderful day. Bye.